Welcome to Shep Rambles, where I am Shep and I tend to ramble about what? Anything and everything. So, what is there to ramble about? Well, how about when it comes to making a decision on where to live? Now, I know that this is going to be um, very debatable. Maybe not so much a controversial type of subject, but uh, um, definitely there's going to be a very wide opinion on what people are going to think about this, um, especially when it comes to a size of a family. Um, but the subject of this video is in regards to uh, living in a house versus doing full-time RVing. And there is a article that I want to share with you in regards to someone who is making money doing full-time RVing. Uh, so that's actually working out for them. But there was a year that uh, we did full-time RVing. It was about almost 10 years ago. And it definitely had its challenges, that's for sure. Because uh, we broke down and we were in New Mexico for three months. And uh, at the, it, we didn't have to have the engine replaced, but the... Um, Oh man, what, what what were they called? The uh, not the gas caps. The um, <sighs> ah shoot, I can't remember what it was. But um, gaskets, head gaskets. That's what it was. So those blue, those had to be replaced, um, which costed three thousand dollars. We had to stretch and borrow money. And that's borrowing money from family in order to get that repaired. Um, otherwise, we would have had to abandon uh, that RV. But um, we didn't, after getting that fixed, we didn't want to take a chance because we were going to go out to Texas. And well, that didn't quite work out. <clears throat> so we stayed there in New Mexico um, to try to rebuild our funds just in case something were to go wrong and we were in a small town it was kind of a dying town it was uh, Tucumcari New Mexico and I say dying uh, no offense to anyone who's in Tucumcari or anything like that when I say a dying town uh, what I'm saying is that during the days of Route 66 it was a pretty bustling town because Route 66 was going right or, you know, right through it. And then, uh, like the movie Cars, the, uh, the, the computer animated movie Cars by Pixar, um, the I-40, the Interstate 40, when it was built, it goes right around Tucumcari. And since it goes right around it, so does traffic. Um, and a lot of business goes around it as well. So as a result, the town started to decrease um, instead of grow. Now, they do have a college there. They have a college uh, that has, um, they have a degree for um, windmill repair, because there's a lot of windmills uh, over in New Mexico. So I thought that was fascinating, and um, I thought there, something. I think there's like a farming degree or something over there too. I was looking into it when I was there because it was kind of a, it was neat uh, being in a small town. I and mean, coming from, uh, I'm a city boy, so I've been in a city majority of my life. So being in a small town was relatively interesting for me. Um, 
try to find a job on the other hand, at least a good, decent paying job, uh, ooh, well, that was another story. <laughs> so that was another experience. And when it came to banking and shopping, uh, naturally, uh, really the only decent uh, grocery store for us to get stuff at a decent price would have been Walmart. And there was not a Walmart there in, in Tucumcari. We had to drive an hour away to get to either Amarillo, Texas, um, or it was a little bit south of New Mexico, and I can't remember the name. Let's see here. In case you're wondering, yes, I do take a look at stocks also. Okay, there's two from Carry and Red. Clovis. That was it. Clovis. So we would drive to Clovis, New Mexico. There was a Walmart down there. Um, <clears throat> and it was definitely like a road trip <laughs> to go to go there. So that was kind of a, a, a fun experience. And because of the length, we would have to plan ahead of time uh, to go. But... Um, It definitely had its uh, downsides, um, but the upsides uh, of doing full-time RVing, one, we had our stuff with us. We didn't have, I mean, as far, as far as packing, it didn't take very long to pack at all. Uh, we just had to kind of put things away, if anything, you know, kind of like cleaning up. Um, but when we wanted to move, we were able to move. So within three months, uh, we, we got the RV, you know, we, we started up the RV and we went to Amarillo. We just took it a little bit further and, uh, and we stayed there for a couple of months. And that freedom of being able to go anywhere and just take your home with you was exhilarating it was it, it just it felt like freedom like real freedom like you're not tied anywhere i guess some people could say that you're tied you're tied to that rv but um you could say the same thing about a house you're tied to a house and see and that was that's my my thing in regards to a house how difficult is it for one to get into a house especially nowadays getting qualified for a house, having to put money down for it. And then, and then when you get to that, getting all your stuff packed and, and or, or, you know, moved in. Um, and then when you get settled in there, there is, uh, there's, you know, getting yourself a job and maybe the only job you can get is, you know, way across town or, or you know, maybe not, in the town or city that you're in, it's like, you know, maybe it's an hour away. Um, or maybe you did have a job that was closer and the only, and now the only one you can get is further away. And then you've got, uh, you know, the situations where you may want to try, like you try to sell your home and it's not that easy. You, you know, you, you spend all this, all this time trying to get it sold and maybe you have a job waiting for you. I mean, do you see where I'm going with this? It, it, it can get very, very stressful. Um, and, you know, I get maybe in, in, in your younger years, it, you, you can, it's okay. But as you get older, it, you kind of like don't want to deal with it. 
At least I don't want to deal with it. But there's so much more freedom when you're full-time RVing because you can establish your home base in any state that you choose. So you, you can establish your home base in a state where you don't have to pay state tax. Um, you could buy yourself property and um, establish your home base there if you want to. Uh, also, if you're in a town or a city, and let's say you're at a park, and you just want to change the scenery, but you want to stay in the same town or city, you just pick up, move across town to another one, and you've got a nice change of scenery. Um, or, you know, like I was saying before, you know, the job that you had is across town. Well, now you can move your RV and go closer. Um, how about, for example, uh, people who live in apartments uh, or condominiums, you know, and they're in an area and they just can't stand where they're at. Maybe they got bad neighbors. It could happen in the neighborhood, too. And you're just, oh, you just, you can't stand it. Guess what? In an RV, room, room, start it up. You could ask, you could ask for another, another lot, or you could just go move to another, you know, another park. Um, and again, if you, uh, you've got the freedom, uh, when it comes to your career. So you happen to find your, you know, for your career, you happen to find a really good opportunity in another state. Without, you don't have the stress of having to, uh, sell your house, pack up your stuff. The going through the trouble of having to move it somewhere or store it or whatever the case is, you just pack up your RV and drive to the next, you know, not the next state, but the state that, you know, you're going to be going to and then find a park, set it all down. You're good to go. So for me, I love full-time RVing. Um, now, not in an RV, but we would like to at least be able to get back to that. Um, there's just a lot of things that have happened uh, since 10 years ago where we had to come back uh, to the house and uh, things just did not go quite as, as planned. Um, but we're hoping to get that turned around. Um, and if you already have a home, sometimes it's best to go ahead and just keep that home because you never know it. Or if you've got property, you know, and, and you kind of plop a simple little house on there because you never know. Um, it's always good to have a base. Um, that's what full-time RVers call. They'll call it like a home base. It's always nice to have a home base to go back to just in case. Sometimes when you're full-time RVing, it can get a little tiring after a while. <clears throat> but RVs don't don't need to be cramped or anything like that. They've got... Um, now, granted, motorhomes are expensive. But fifth wheels that you pull with a truck are a little bit more reasonable. Now, you have to get a truck, of course. But your truck will double as your trans local transportation. So that's... That's a plus on that. But I've noticed that with fifth, fifth wheels, you've got a lot more space. And inside, when you've got the, um, the pop-outs uh, that extend out and stuff, it's like living in a, in a house. I mean, not as big as a house, but the way it's spaced, it's, it's rather nice. It, it, I mean, if you haven't looked at fifth wheels... Um, Take some time, like on a weekend, and go to uh, an RV dealership and go check out some of the fifth wheels. Um, you'll be surprised. There's like some really nice ones. Um, the ones that I like are the toy haulers, where in the back there's like a garage. Um, usually people use those, put their ATVs and stuff like that in there. But I think they're great... Um, where you can put in like a, like an electric car 
or you can put in, you know, like your your bikes, or you know, you you've got a little garage there that 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 uh, that you can use. Um, but also, it can double as a room because who says you have to keep you know your bikes or your little electric car or whatever in that garage. If you're at a park, you just move that stuff out, you know, and then you can um, set that up as a secondary room, you know, within reason. Because obviously, if you want to move, you don't want to, um, you don't want this thing permanently changed. You want to be able to move your stuff back in there. But I, I like options. I like having options. So um, if you haven't looked at them, check them out. Check them out. Now, as far as which one's better than the other, obviously it's going to be, it's going to be up to the individual. There are, there, I'm going to, I'll admit to you, there are people with big families where a house is probably the best, best idea. Um, but if you've got maybe one or two kids, I think you can still pull off um, living in a in an RV. And and the reason why I say that, especially with the um, with the fifth wheels, is it can expand and be about the size of a manufactured home. Uh, so. Yeah, I think I think I think you can do well with that, and if you have a if you have a bigger family, you can still work with that because they have um, they have these rooms that you can uh, they they extend from the awning, and you can put the walls uh, from the sides and come down and just have like a whole another room from the outside, so it extends it anymore. So. There are ways to make uh, your RV or a motorhome or fifth wheel uh, even bigger. So, and you still have that freedom to be able to, to move around. Um, so that's my ramble in regards to the two of them. Um, I think it's great because you've got the flexibility, you've got the freedom there's nothing like being on the open. Let me tell you, if you've if you've not been, road trips are fun. Um, it feels even better when you're in an RV, I think. But when you've got the open road, and it's ahead of you, there's nothing quite like it. It's like the future's ahead of you, and it's like adventure. Who doesn't like an adventure? Adventures are great. It's it's just a great feeling, um, and there's and it's just there's so much out there, you know. You don't have this ball and chain just weighing you down in a city. Uh, you there's just so much out there. So many different people uh, to meet. So many different types of differences between a small town and a city. We met some great people when we were in Tucum Carry. It was it was a very neat experience. Um, and when we left Tucum Carry and Amarillo, we had a chance. We stayed in Camp Verde, Arizona, um, and we also stayed in Sedona. And that never got tiring, because I, I worked in Sedona. And let me tell you, if you've not been in Sedona and and you haven't seen the Red Rocks, when I was driving to work, I never got tired of the view. When I was coming over over the hill and I saw the red rocks, I, you know, and going going shopping there to the store, it never got tiring. So, it's 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 really cool. Um, but that's my thing on it, and I might do another video on this too, because this this is a this is definitely a subject that um, that is close to my heart. I really really like this. Um, I hope to be able to get into it again um, when we're financially able uh, and hopefully I'll still be alive. But uh, yeah, so that's my thing. So let's get to this article that I want to share with you in regards to uh, this person that's able 
to make money while they're full-time RVing. Okay, so here we are in front of the computer. I'm gonna go ahead and go over this article here. I've got to put on my uh, my uh, eyes. So this 35-year-old is traveling around America in an RV, making up to a thousand dollars a week because of this uh, dog walking app. Thousand bucks a week. That's uh, look at look at this guy. This guy right here. He's like, hey man, what's up? He's like, what's up? What's up? <laughs> okay, so Amy, uh, world rich Amy, uh, she travels across the country in an RV. She stays in a new city every month or two. She's currently in Austin, and she's able to do this thanks to her flexible and lucrative side gig as a dog walker for Rover. Um, I guessing Rover is the name of the app. Dog walking apps are big business. Wag raised three hundred million dollars in January. Um, then there's Mad Paws. They received five million from Qantas Airlines. And then there's Rover, yeah, which features on-demand drop-in visits and doggy daycare. And they raised one hundred and twenty-five million. The selection process to be a dog walker is strict. Okay, so not everyone can do this. Compared uh, getting a jo dog walking job to getting into Harvard. <laughs> but once you're in, you can make a comfortable living. If you're self-motivated and willing to put the hours in, there are plenty of dogs that need to be walked. I was speaking with a friend recently who was able to buy a house using her Rover income alone. Well, yeah, if you're bringing in a thousand bucks a month, or not a month, well, you do that a month, you can't really get anything. A week, that's like four grand a month. Yeah, of course you would be able to. Um, her husband, uh, he's a handyman, remember? What's up, man? I'm a handyman. What you need fixed, man? Um, he's a handyman with TaskRabbit. He's been on the road for 11 months. Uh, he's gone to Reno, Las Vegas, Phoenix, Tucson, El Paso. Um, so I, I guess TaskRabbit is another app. So if you are a handyman, I guess check out this TaskRabbit. Either that or it's the name of his business. I don't know. But anyway, she has plans to travel for a year. And she's going to go to New Orleans. New Orleans. Or New Orleans, depending upon how you want to pronounce it. Now, see, this is what I'm talking about as far as full-time RVing. You've, uh, if you're stuck in a house, you're pretty much chained to where you're at. But if you're full-timing in an RV and you got yourself um, a good job to take with you, something that you can work remotely, I you want to talk about freedom? There's freedom for you because you can move where, where the work needs to go and you get to see different places. I mean, what's not to like? Honestly, okay, maybe gas gas will be expensive, but it's not like you're going to be, you know, driving your motor home or RV every single day. Um, and I think your gas is going to be better with a truck uh, pulling a fifth wheel than it will be driving a, a motorhome honestly between the two i would prefer a fifth wheel over a motorhome and the reason is if your motorhome breaks down and has to be fixed well there goes your house but with a fifth wheel all you got to get fixed is your truck so you just take your truck in to get fixed you still got your house that's my thoughts on it anyway uh, anyway, let's see here. She's also a freelance pet photographer. She makes between $100 and $350 a week, walking between three to six dogs a day. That's, that's a lot. For about 30 minutes each. That's, that's not too bad, though. Six dogs a day. So, th at max, you're looking at... 30, 30, it's an hour. Uh, roughly a little bit more than three hours 
three to four hours a day if you're doing like six dogs a day. Okay, so she's part time. She says full time dock walkers can make a lot more. My goodness, she's making this much money on f part time? Man, what am I doing wrong? It's enough to keep their journey going. Expenses on the road are minimal. We no longer have car payments, and our rent for the places we park are usually between 300 and 600 a month. Yeah, that depends on where you're going. I'd say if you try to keep it modest, you're looking about three, about 300 to 400 a month. The nicer parks are about 600. And yeah, they usually include utilities with, with, with the price. She says one of their biggest expenses is repairs, like putting in a new air conditioning unit in their vehicle that costs nearly 700. Yes, that is true. Um, keeping up with your RV, the maintenance, especially with a motorhome, is costly uh, i don't think it's going to be as bad with a fifth wheel um, but for those of you who travel and have fifth wheels maybe you could let me know um, but dog walking via rover helps cover it there are some weeks where it's not out of the question to make well over a thousand in a week if the demand is there uh, back in december i was able to bring in twelve hundred dollars just during a five-day stretch sitting and walking three to ten dogs a day now there's a, a picture good thing these dogs get well I'm going to assume these dogs are from the same house <laughs> God, that'd be bad if they were all attacking each other uh, because she moves to a different city every month she says the downside is losing repeat clientele and having to start all over again with new dogs okay yep I get that uh, the longer I'm in a city the more services I'm able to book from repeat clients alone so she could go back and forth between cities too um, when we arrived in Phoenix I was working by the next afternoon I can't think of many other jobs that I qualify for where that's possible. That's neat. That is really neat. I have a dog. She's a husky. And she really wants attention. I, if you know anything about huskies, they want attention. Uh, she says the hiring process was daunting. They ask questions about your experience and need testimonials from previous clients. Okay, so it sounds like you have to be a previous dog walker. You can't just go into this like brand new. There's also a background check, identity check, and tests that you have to complete before they'll make your profile live. Uh, let's see here. There's another dog walker. She started with Rover to supplement her income as a medical examiner. And she now works with Rover full time. Oh my goodness. She doesn't pay rent here. I house and pet sit through, through, through <laughs> Rover for lodging in million dollar homes. And since I don't, <laughs> that's going to be nice. And since I don't pay rent, my overhead is minimal. If I make an average $50 a night house sitting, it covers my expenses, about $1,500 a month. So, yeah, there you go. Um, some really cool stuff here. So, um, I'll go ahead and we'll leave it there. Don't want to make this video uh, any longer than it needs to be. Because uh, we can always revisit this in regards to full-time RVing. Um, and uh, some other articles and stuff like that as far as uh, things to do. Uh, as far as working. And uh, let me know if you, uh, if you liked uh, this video. Um, you know the drill. Click like. Uh, that at least tells me that you like you like the material um and if you didn't like it well i mean there's always a thumbs down but i'm more interested in comments actually the uh your feedback 
um, on the video itself. I mean, thumbs up, thumbs down. That's kind of like a simple thing, but I'm more interested in conversation. So leave your feedback. I mean, thumbs up, great. Um, but also leave your feedback in the video too, because uh, I want to know what you think. Um, and in the meantime, I appreciate you uh, checking things out and uh, subscribing is a thing. And until till next time, we'll see you on the next video.